Well, hello, my friend, and welcome back to another episode of Legacy Farm on the Podcast. This is your host, J.C. Young, and today's topic and discussion is this, one step forward, 20 steps back. So we had about, dang, it was almost an hour and 45 minute long Zoom call today with our members. Every Tuesday, we have our community boardroom call where we're talking through finances and numbers. We're going over members' farmer metrics with them. We're talking through bank scenarios and strategy there, how the banks are positioning them, how to renegotiate rates, how to make sure they're getting the best rates, how to make sure their loans are structured correctly. We talk over cash flow. So as you can tell, there's a lot of things that we uh, discuss on that call with the members, which again, it just drives it drives it home and makes it super valuable for all of them because seeing, you know, being a farmer or rancher and running a two or $3 million operation and being able to dig into the finances of another farmer or rancher's operation and, and learn from their mistakes, guys, it's just hard to put a value on that. And this is something that just does not happen in today's world uh, because growing up on the farm, you're taught to never share anything and always put on this face that things are going great and financially you're solid um, because you don't want anybody to know your business. Well, our members are so far spread out that uh, that's not what we do in Legacy Farmer. <laughs> we openly share anything and everything because one person's problem is another person's solution, right? And that's really such a true statement because we can all learn from other people's mistakes and problems and challenges that they're facing. So today we had, uh, as you can tell, a very in-depth and deep discussion across all those scenarios. But I wanted to talk about a specific statement that came up around taking one step forward and 20 steps back. Now, this, uh, 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 some of our members are in the position where, you know, some of them lost money two, three, four years ago, and the bank has not structured their loans correctly. And what I mean by that is they've taken those losses and just carried them over on their line of credit. And they've carried them over year after year after year. So let's say they only need, you know, a $500,000 line of credit to run the acres that they have, but instead they have to have an $800,000 line of credit because on that line of credit, we have $300,000 worth of losses that are sitting there from the prior years. Now, what you'll see is some banks will do it that way. And then you'll see some banks that'll actually take that loss. They wanna, they wanna move that debt from your operating line so they can keep your operating line at half a million. And they wanna move that debt and secure it against some other form of collateral. Now, this could either be machinery and equipment, it could be breeder livestock, it could be, um, or long-term real estate, right? now. With breeder livestock and machinery and equipment, typically when you are, you know, borrowing against those assets, let's say we had to move that money from the operating line down to an intermediate loan and we had to take a loan out against our equipment. Well, obviously we can't pay the 300,000 back in one year, right? So the bank will, if you're securing it with equipment, they'll typically term it out to a five to seven year payment. And that's fine. It's not great, but it's fine. Now, what does this mean though? It means that in one year, we lost enough money that we now have to work for the next five to seven years to pay off that one bad year. Now, obviously, guys, as a business owner, we never want to be in this position. I don't want to see, you know, any of our members ever in this position ever again. But so many of them have experienced it. You listening to this, if you run an operation, you've probably had to experience that. You've had losses in one year and the bank um, the bank went ahead and termed out those losses is essentially what it's called. They termed them out and they termed them out against real estate or they termed them out against equipment. Now, here's, here's the problem though, guys, is a lot of banks, when it comes to how they wanna term those loans out, one, they're worried about your repayment capacity, right? So we gotta give you a payment that you can cash flow the next year. But two, they're also worried about their source of collateral. Now, any bank at the end of the day is much rather going to have real estate as collateral. Why is that? Well, it maintains a store of value. Real estate's, if you have a piece of ground today that's worth 3,000 bucks an acre, 20 years from now, it's still gonna be worth 3,000 bucks an acre. Versus if you have a piece of equipment, a combine, and today it's worth $200,000, 20 years from now, it's not gonna be worth $200,000, right? It does not hold its store of value. So what we're finding and what I experienced in my career is the banks are always going to want to take those losses if they have a choice and they would much rather prefer to term them out against real estate. Now they're going to sell this to you because they're able to, now, now the loan's gonna be over 20 years versus against like securing it with machinery equipment, it's gonna be five to seven. So a 20 year payment for you, man, that works a lot better in your cash flow. Interest rates are able to give you today at three, four percent. Yeah, great. Like it's an excellent selling point. I get it. But from a business owner perspective, let's talk about what you just did there. Let's re like really like think through like what just happened. I am running a business of which I lost three hundred thousand dollars in one year. 
And now in order for me to recoup those losses, it is going to take me 20 years, 20 years to recoup those losses. Do you see a problem with this? Like guys, nobody's talking about this in this industry. If I'm running a business where I lose $300,000 in one year and now I, one, I can't get out of it the next year or even worse, I can't even, even if we did take the 300,000 and move it and secure it against a piece of equipment, let's say your cash flow doesn't even allow you to afford a payment on a $300,000 note against equipment over seven years. Guys, you got big problems here. You have gigantic problems. You have to look at your business and how you're running things and how you're managing things. Because if I have a business where I lose 300,000 in one year and I, my only out is to turn that loss out over 20 years and that's the only way I can afford the payment, like I need to drastically change things. I need to look and analyze my entire business and figure out what I need to change. Cause I cannot operate under the assumption that I'm just going to do the same thing next year and hope things work out. But again, we look at the facts and the reality of what's happening today. That's how a majority of farmers or ranchers are operating. Lose money one year, term it out over 20. The bank's happy because they just got real estate, the safest store of value and safest piece of collateral they can have. And two, you're happy because I have a cheap payment. I have cheap interest and uh, things like that. But the problem is though, is that guys, any business, that has to, that loses so much money in one year that it takes them 20 years to pay that off. Honestly, it shouldn't be in business. Like you shouldn't be in business. Like <laughs> nobody is going to invest in that business. That business is not sustainable long term. Your kids will never take over that business if that is the type of operation that you are running. Now, if you have to term it out, let's say you have a $300,000 loss. You want to use your equipment and you can pay it off in three years. Okay, great. Three years is a hell of a lot better than 20. But again, it's this whole step of taking one step forward and 20 steps back or one step forward and seven steps back if you're turning it out over seven years or five steps back if you turn it out over five years or three steps back if you turn it over three years. Okay, guys, but you have to look at your business and, and really look at like, what am I doing? Is, is it working? If I have to, if my only option is to term out my loss from 2021 and term it out over 20 years and have to secure the real estate that either I worked for 20 or 30 years to pay off, or maybe it was inherited. Maybe you got it from your dad and maybe your dad got it from his granddad. Maybe it's been in your, your family's operation for three generations. Like you have to understand that one, you, one year of operating a business, you are now having to sacrifice your grandfather's work of paying off that piece of ground or your father's work of paying off that piece of ground. It's not just you. You're, you're basically throwing all their hard work down the shitter as well. And it doesn't feel good. It does not look good. And so as a business owner, this is what came up on the call today a lot was one step forward, 20 steps back. Like if that's your scenario and that's where you're at right now, my friend, you drastically have to get on top of your stuff. Like you have to know your numbers. You have to start breaking things down. You have to know what the bank's looking at. You have to have something that is going to counteract the decisions that you're making on a day-to-day -day basis. And what do I mean by that? Well, all of our members go through farmer metrics and farmer metrics is one. It's a, it's a simplifying the numbers tool Two, It's a, it's a preventative tool. It's, it's here to prevent us from making very bad decisions that end up costing us $300,000 in one year. And then we have to term it out over five, seven, or 20 years to pay off. Like it's a preventative measure as well in making sure that we just, you know, stop from making dumb decisions that cost us a lot of time and a lot of money and a lot of energy. Like we don't have time for that. Your kids do not have time for that. And again, if you're looking at your operation and you're, you're currently in this situation where it's one step forward, 20 years or 20 steps back, you really got to look at what you're doing because here's the deal. If I'm your child and I'm planning on taking over the operation, if I knew that truth, there is no way that I would ever want to take over that operation because all they're doing is they're taking over your problems. All they're doing is they're taking over your inability to manage your business properly and catch these things. And so my friend, I'm not talking down to you if you're in that situation. I'm telling you that inside of Legacy Farmer, we cover all of these things. Like this stuff and what we do in Legacy Farmer, it's just the more members we bring in guys, which we brought a lot of members in here the past three months and they've all been outstanding members. They're active on calls, they're sharing numbers, we're working through their financial positions. Like this stuff is just not talked about. There's, and I talked about it today on today's call as well. It's like, there's a massive disconnect between education 
and f- like farmers and finance and the education in between. There's a massive gap between bankers I'm learning and farm operations. There's a massive education gap there as well on both sides. Bankers don't fully understand what the farmers doing. Farmers don't fully understand what the banks are looking at. Legacy Farmer exists to fill that gap. And we are filling that gap. You want to challenge me? Go check out all of our reviews. Go look at all of our reviews and the the feedback that we are getting from our customers that we're bringing in and taking through our entire process. Please challenge me on it because I have a lot of people that talk crap on ads, on Facebook and all this stuff. We get hate messages all the time. At the end of the day, I care about our members because those members, they all have families. They'll have kids that are coming back to take over the operation and they want to make sure that they pass on something that's profitable, that's organized, that is sustainable. Not just for their generation, but for for their grandkids and their great grandkids and several generations down the line. Like the mission and the passion we have inside of Legacy Farmer for truly helping these families uh, is going to far outweigh anybody who says anything negative on a Facebook ad or talks crap or sends us hate messages or whatever. Like it's, it's the mission is too important. So my friend, again, if you're in this position and everything I said to you today is really ringing home true, you seriously need to consider like doing your research on Legacy Farmer, go through, watch our training overview, go through, listen to some of the testimonials, pick somebody from your state. We have people in like 30 different states now. Go find a testimonial on there from somebody from your state to where you know a little bit about their geographic area and it's somebody you can actually resonate with. And do your research, do your due diligence, and then just schedule a call with our team. You'll talk to Joni, she's the one that takes our, our onboarding calls right now and enrollment calls. You'll have a good conversation with her. You'll file an application. We'll see if we're a fit. But again, like if any of this message rang home to you, I can tell you what we're doing in Legacy Farmers Fit. Like it's no longer, it's not not even just a question. Like there's no, it's 100% certainty because we learn more and more with every member we come in, how big of a knowledge gap there is out there and how many people are in that cycle where they're taking the one step forward and 20, year, 20 steps back or one step forward and five years back. And you don't have to do that. I'm telling you straight up, you don't have to do that. So my friend, I hope you found this message valuable. I hope it pushes you to take some action across the board. I hope, um, yeah, I hope to God that you're not in that situation where it's one step forward in 20 years, 20 steps back. But the reality is 95% of farmers are going to have experienced that at some point in their career. And legacy farmers on a mission to make sure that doesn't happen ever again. So my friends, I hope you found it valuable. And uh, yeah, that's it for this message. We'll catch you on the next episode.